I'm Lady Aska, and today I want to share a really cool discovery from one of my Discord members, Zero Chronicles. We had texture swap tutorials before, but these either use coordinates to instant swap and looked rather unnatural, or complicated animations and plugins. With this method, you won't need to bother with any additional plugins besides UniVM, and your VM format will be kept intact as well, so stay tuned! Let's start with our Vroid avatar in Vroid Studio and an easy way to create some additional textures right here that you can use for the process. Of course, you can create these outside of Vroid as well using a drawing program. But if you aren't the creative type, there's something you can do just using the given presets from Vroid itself. First, we go to the Cheeks category under Face and select the preset we want to use. Don't forget to change the color to a darker red to get a stronger blush effect. Then we go to Edit Texture and export the layer there. Save it for further use later. Disable the blush again after on your model. There are other presets that we can use here as well, which are located under the Face Paint category on the left. Export here as many as you want to trigger later. It's just important that these are transparent. If you create them yourself, line them up with your face texture beforehand. Just don't forget to reset these later so your avatar doesn't have any on them before export. Talking about export. If you want to use HANA tool with this avatar later, you have to follow the usual rules of export. So uncheck here the delete transparent meshes and also uncheck the combine hair meshes. Then proceed with your export. If you aren't worried about that, you don't have to change anything. Now we open up a new 3D project in Unity. And we actually don't have to worry about the version this time. But again, if you want to use HANA tool as well, you would follow my usual recommendations by using the Unity version 2019.4.31 f1 and the UniVRM plugin 0.92.0. Otherwise, this will work perfectly fine with the newer versions of Unity and the UniVRM plugin. After the project opens up, we will import our UniVRM plugin under Assets, Import Package, Custom Package, and select the version 0.920 or your version of choice. Confirm through the progress till all parts of the plugin are loaded. Then you drag your .vrm avatar into the bottom assets. If you want to be a bit more organized, you can also create a little folder and drag the avatar into this folder so you could theoretically work on multiple avatars within this project. The next step is to double click on your avatar within your assets folder to open it in edit mode. You can identify that you really are in edit mode if the background in the scene is blue instead of gray. This is where we will work our magic. We will create here under head via right click an empty game object and name it whatever your effect is going to be. To get to the head, you navigate through root, hips, spine, chest, upper chest, neck and then head. The object will likely be created at the bottom of the hierarchy list for head so you should drag it higher up in the hierarchy. Of course, you can do all of this under another category than the head. We just choose the head here because we are working on face effects. And our effects should be tied to the head, so they will move along with it after. Similar to how you attach wings to the back of the avatar or a tail to the hips. I will create all three game objects here already for the three effects I selected. Now we will set some things up for these objects. We click on the object and switch to the inspector to the right. Here we add two components. The first will be a mesh filter and the second is a mesh render. Under the mesh filter, we set the mesh we want to use here. Since everything that we do at the moment is happening on the face, we choose the face. If you wanted to change something on the body, you would choose that instead. On the mesh render, we set the size manually to nine now. This is equal to the amount of parts our face mesh is made of like skin, eyelashes, mouth, etc. You can verify that by clicking on face to the left. Body, for example, has 10. You will actually see something in the form of the face spawn now above your avatar. And you have to adjust this with the arrows shown here to line it up with your face. Our goal is to create a kind of mask effect, where we put our effects on various masks that we can turn on and off later using blend shapes. For this reason, we let the pink mask pop out here slightly, instead of lining it up perfectly. You can change that later, 
once you actually have the texture put on here to get the best results. So now that we set the element size as well, we can fill these elements here with materials. Before we do that though, let's prepare our textures. We can drag and drop our created textures right under textures. But as you see, these aren't transparent yet, but get imported instead with a black background by default. To change that, we click on them one by one and change in the inspector the following. We check alpha is transparent and set the wrap mode to clump. After applying these changes, we are ready to get to our materials. Since we created three new objects, we will create three new materials here. Okay, to be honest, there will be a fourth material too, but more on that later. We name these materials something that makes sense with the texture we will put on there. And now we will again change some things in the inspector for each of these. The first thing to change is the shader. This will be the m -Tune shader, the same that is used by Vroid Studio. Then we will set the rendering type to transparent and under color drag our textures from the texture folder in here. Alternatively, you can click on these little boxes and select the texture here directly. Now I said there would be an extra material, and that is still true. The main idea is to just create a transparent material, so we can cover up all the unused parts of the mesh. Here we also use the m -Tune shader and select the rendering type as transparent. Once that is done, we will attach these prepared materials to our game objects. Here you have to pay a bit of attention. As I said, the mesh contains actually different parts for different areas of the face. You can again check these by switching to face to see which material corresponds with which part of the face. If you wanted to switch your iris for example, you would have to find the eye iris material here and use the same element on your object to attach your new material plus texture to. In our case, this will be element 3, the overall skin. We select for all other elements our transparent material. Double check after if your material is still set to transparent in case you get weird textures on your face or object. Also set the color transparency of your effects here to zero, so the effect is hidden by default. Similar to how we done it in our custom effects tutorial. Now we are just missing the blend shapes to trigger these. We switch over to blend shapes and create three new blend shapes here. Name them something that describes your effect. Then we navigate to the material list tab and add in a new property containing a material and underscore color. The material should be the material you created beforehand for this effect. And that's why it's so useful to name them something that you can identify easily with the effect you want to trigger. The underscore color will be the place where you put up the transparency to the max value of 255 now. Don't forget to set the color itself to white so your original color comes through. After all this is set up, we are finally ready to export. We actually have to adjust a few things here as well to get the best result. If you skip this step, your textures will likely not show up in VC phase after. Select your model and use the VRM0 option in the top menu bar to export. Here we also go to export settings and check the pose freeze at the top. Before exporting now, also use the make T pose button. And if you haven't set a version yet, change back to matter and set one like V1 or 12 or whatever you think would fit here. And now we are done with the preparations. We import our new avatar into VC phase. And if everything is working correctly, then you will have your avatar looking as usual, moving if you're using a webcam and opening its mouth if you talk. If that is for some reason not happening, check if in Unity the face is in edit mode actually above the root. If that was not the case, drag it up there and export again. Go to your expression settings and test your new blend shapes. The coolest thing here is that you can adjust if you want your effect to show up directly or with a smoother transition using the transition time slider. It will look the same as if you animated it, but without all the extra steps, plugins or format changes. You can actually do so many more things with these techniques. And this is why I probably will do a few more videos to show you what's possible. I'm sure you will also come up with some awesome ideas yourself. Thank you again Zero Chronicles for the awesome discovery and for sharing it with the community. I will see you guys next time. Hope you have a wonderful day.